in my own words. Memoirs of a 20th Century Mystic by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Except the United Nations. It so happened that the camp counselor in the tent next to mine at Ecole Chaplain was the niece of the head of UNICEF. I told her that I was looking for a job and I wanted to work at the United Nations. I had the idea that I would study political science and work there. So she said, well, I'll call my aunt and I'm sure she can arrange an appointment for you to get where you want to go. Soon afterwards, in the fall of 1958, after finishing my work at the camp, I was in New York City. I was going to interviews and trying to get a job at the United Nations, but a job was not forthcoming. I thought, while I'm waiting for these various interviews, I'll go to the New York Public Library and I'll look up everything there is to be found on St. Germain. I took out all the cards on St. Germain in the reference section and soon a librarian brought me about five stacks of books on this master, each about five feet high. You wouldn't believe the amount of information in the New York Public Library on St. Germain, especially on accounts of the French Revolution and European history. I thought I'd be there for a week. As I sat down to look through this stack, I felt the master tap me on the shoulder. It wasn't a physical tap, but it was definitely the master, though he was not visible. He spoke to me and said to go back to the United Nations and go to the woman who was the head of UNICEF. He said that he had arranged for me to meet with her and he would see to it that I got the proper job at the United Nations through her. And he said, you'll have to hurry because she's about to leave, but I will hold her there until you arrive. It seems that I took about eight steps and I was all the way out of the library, onto the street and into the first bus that was headed for the UN. Grabbing the bus as it was leaving the cab, I felt like I was on wings. When I got to the UN, I went to the desk and asked to see this woman. Her secretary returned the call and said that she was just leaving the office, but she would wait till I got there. Well, that's all in order, I thought. So I went up to her office and proceeded to tell her that I had met her niece when we were counseling in summer camp together. She said, that she will get me any job I wanted in the UN or in UNICEF, and she asked me what job I would like to have. Of course, at UNICEF, I'd be typing labels for Christmas cards that will be sent out all over the world, and I'd be stuck up on the ninth floor or the 13th floor somewhere. I told her that I knew about the photographer down on the first floor, Leo Rosenthal who photographed the delegates, that I would like to be his secretary and he had already interviewed me. So she, so she recommended me to him and he gave me the job. This job got me the contact I needed in order to investigate and explore the UN from top to bottom. I had to be in all the committee meetings. I was back behind the scenes in the interpreter's booths. I got tickets to all of the banquets and gatherings, and I got to go to all of the embassies. I met hundreds of delegates, ambassadors, and representatives from all over the world ever, every day. Since my job was to show them the latest pictures taken of, taken of them on the floor of the General Assembly, in the Security Council, in their private meetings, their receptions, and so forth. I had to know everyone of these hundreds of people individually, memorize their names and faces, and match them with the photographs that I had in my files. And the 
moment one of them appeared at my desk, I had to look at the face, remember the name, pull his photograph and say, here you are, Mr. Ambassador. Here's this beautiful picture that you can send home and publish in your home newspaper. I was in a panic most of the time I worked there because I had to remember all of these foreign names and faces, hundreds of them, all descending upon me at once and demanding their pictures as they came out of their meetings. During that experience, I learned that no matter who a person is, no matter what is great exalted position in the world is no matter where he has come from no matter what is behind him in wealth power or position the individual is still a man or a woman like me or anyone else and i learned that the greatest men and women are the most humble no matter where they are in government or in church i learned that the people who are truly great and truly humble will deal with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis of equality not of attainment but of opportunity here is a fellow man a fellow woman a soul with equal opportunity to make it in life there are those who do not have this attitude they are pompous proud they talk down their nose at you. They are demanding, commanding, ruthless, cruel. They are opportunists. And they make the little people, the children of God, feel that they are of no value, no worth, and have no standing. I had enough self-esteem in those days, enough awareness of the I am presence within me, that I knew who I was and I knew that no one there was better than I was. And I learned this by watching the behavior, sometimes extremely abominable, of these individuals. When I saw what was happening behind the scenes at the U United Nations, immense corruption and sensuality, I knew for a certainty that God was not going to save the world through that organization. I knew the place inside and out, and I knew that those people weren't solving the world's problems. I realized overwhelmingly that they are not idealists and did not have the welfare of the people at heart. I saw that they were engaged in a mad round of power politics and the manipulations of the economies. They were there for their egos, for how they looked back home, for politicking, and they did not have the power of the Holy Spirit that it will take to bring about world peace. They were not working with the Brotherhood of Light, but they were on a quest for personal power. Their performance over the Hungarian uprising should have told me as much. I had gone to the UN with high ideals. I had grown up in the East Coast and my indoctrination was from a liberal establishment. I went to Eastern schools and learned political science the way it was taught in those schools. And I had every reason to believe that the UN was the hope of the world because from the time we were little children through college, this was what we had been told. After my three-month coop job at the United Nations, I came to realize that I knew everything I needed to know about it. I left there in December 1958 at the conclusion of the 13th General Assembly, very disillusioned. It was Saint Germain and not anyone in physical who revealed to me that indeed the UN was not the hope of the world. This became a great crisis in my life. In fact, the awareness of what was really going on behind the scenes at the UN was so shocking to me that I was depressed for many months after I left. While I was back in Antioch during my studies, the United Nations left me with the realization that it will not be through the governments of the world that I could reach the people in solving the world's problems 
we will have to start back much further within man in his own concept of himself and his concept of God. God was the power, wisdom and love and that will reveal the means to our victory in this age.